of the air. And that lets you save the... Look here. True form life. Green look on the <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body. As always, I'm your host, True Forms Drew Taddea, fitness expert. Today we're interviewing your local athletic therapist, Rebecca Spears. We're going to talk about how she can help you out in prevention. We've got that full interview and so much more coming up on... This is Exploring Mind and Body with True Forms Drew Taddea, fitness expert on 96.5 CKFM. This segment brought to you by Complete Truth Protein Powder. Live free, live true with whole natural foods. No additives, preservatives, soy, gluten, and dairy free. Supplement with superfoods to energize your day. Visit CompleteTruthProtein.co for details. All right, on today's edition of Exploring Mind and Body, we have Rebecca Spears, who's a local athletic therapist. She's in our studio right now, so let's welcome her to the show. Rebecca? Hi. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us today. We're uh, happy to have you. Uh, you were doing some traveling, and uh, you're back in Olds now, and uh, you have some time for us. So thanks for taking the time to sit down with us. You're welcome. Let's start off with the yourself. Um, you're a local athletic therapist, and you have a, your own shop in town here. And uh, can you tell us, our viewers, about yourself? Sure. Um, I've been in Olds for about two years now. Uh, as Drew said, I'm an athletic therapist, and I own uh, Collegiate Sports Medicine Olds. Uh, it's a franchise kind of thing of a clinic in Red Deer that I've been at for about 10 years now. Um, and uh, yeah, there's physiotherapy and athletic therapy and massage therapy all there, um, as well as a few other things. But um, yeah. So you particularly specialize in athletic therapy. Yeah, athletic therapy is a little bit different than physiotherapy. It's different schooling and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm an athletic therapist myself. So can you tell us the difference between if someone wants to get themselves fixed or if uh, they want to prevent, um, why would they come to you as opposed to a conventional physiotherapist? Uh, the biggest difference between athletic therapy and physiotherapy obviously is our, is our education background. Uh, as an athletic therapist, my education is strictly in musculoskeletal injuries. So injuries that are dealing with joints and muscles and tendons and ligaments and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and we also do not just the clinical side of stuff, but also the, what we consider on field side of stuff. And so that's, uh, working with sports teams and dealing with injuries right when they happen and assessing injuries and that sort of stuff at that point, as well as getting, um, the patient back to that active lifestyle or that performance lifestyle, uh, depending on if you're an athlete or just a, you know, an active individual, that sort of stuff. So, so um, that's the biggest thing for, or that's kind of what our education background is. So if you're uh, dealing with an active person, so can you maybe uh, get into a few details about why would someone go to an athletic therapist as opposed to a regular physiotherapist? Because, uh, I mean, even myself, I don't know why would I come to one or the other? Um, I think mainly because we are specialized in that um, active and athletic population base um, and specialized in that musculoskeletal type of injury. And so, um, you know, in my, in all my schooling, I've just dealt with um, muscles and joints and ligaments and tendons and that sort of stuff. Um, I didn't learn anything as far as uh, like nerve, uh, neurological type issues, um, like stroke rehab or spinal cord rehab and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and just the, the musculoskeletal side of stuff. So we're a little bit more specialized. Uh, we tend to be a little bit more active in our, um, rehab as well, more exercise based. And so if you are already, you know, an athlete or, or an active individual, then, um, you know, you want to have those, those exercises and, and that sort of stuff to get you back to, uh, that lifestyle that you want to be living and, and, you know, staying active and, and that sort of stuff. Okay. So, you know, a question that I always wondered, what is the, what's the most, what's the most frequent reason someone comes in to see you? Um, I think the, the biggest, uh, or the most common injury, I guess I would say, um, is lower backs and hips and that sort of stuff. Um, as well as knees and shoulders. Those are kind of the most common kind of body parts that we tend to see. Uh, so, you know, a lot of those tend to be overuse things. Um, some of them are acute. Uh, so, you know, a sprained knee or something like that. Uh, but a lot of overuse type things, 
um, you know, getting you back on, on an exercise program to work on the muscle imbalances and that sort of stuff that, that have caused those overuse issues and, and, you know, getting you to know what it is that caused it in the first place and, and trying to get it, you know, fixed in long term so that it doesn't come back. Okay. Um, we, we talked about injury prevention on the show. We talk about prevention in a lot of different areas. And of course there's treating. Uh, I think a lot of people would come in to treat uh, just like in most areas <laughs> of life. They look into treat uh, before prevent. And uh, of course I believe the opposite. You should look to prevent before treating. So you uh, briefly told me some of the things that uh, you guys can do to prevent as opposed to treat. So can you share with us some of those things? Sure. Um, you know, as an athletic therapist, we, a lot of our focus is on prevention as well as, um, you know, treating them after the fact prevention and education as to what you can do, um, in your day to day life to, to help so that you don't have these overuse issues. And, um, you know, so, you know, we do have, um, you know, people that will come in for say a gait assessment. So a runner, um, or somebody that's af- even just walking a lot or standing on their feet a lot can come in and get an assessment as to, you know, if they have any muscle imbalances or weaknesses, um, tight muscles, that sort of stuff that are affecting their running mechanics, um, that may cause an issue down the road might not really have any pain or, or symptoms at the moment, but if you're maybe starting to train for a marathon or or something like that or a long bike ride or something, you know, coming in and making sure that you've got um, the proper mechanics and don't have any muscle imbalances and that sort of stuff to prevent those issues from coming up when you do start to get into the longer training sessions and that sort of stuff. Or, um, you know, right now there's a lot of, you know, people just starting to get onto the golf course and and that sort of stuff. And so even just coming in and making sure that, um, you know, not specific to the golf swing, but just making sure that there's no muscle imbalances um, in any of those muscles that you would be using and, and make sure you've got the proper flexibility and range of motion and stuff like that to be able to go through your golf swing or um, various other kind of um, you know, sports and, and that sort of stuff as well. So how would you, how, what would that look like for someone that might consider doing something like that coming in to see you? So it doesn't sound too, uh, <laughs> too scary of an experience that can be poking and prodding, but I'm sure there's a process you go through to assess what they need to do. Yeah. So for instance, for a gait assessment, um, you know, gait assessment is basically watching how people are walking and running and, and that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, getting you on the treadmill and watching, uh, how you're walking with shoes and without shoes, um, and, you know, possibly probably get you running as well, depending on if you are a runner, if you're just a walker, then I'm not going to get you to run. But, um, if you're starting to get into a running program or something like that, then getting you on the treadmill to run and watching how you're running and your mechanics that way. Um, but also just testing the range of motion of your joints, um, and your hips and your knees and your ankles and that sort of stuff, as well as the, the strength in those muscles that you need that are more important for running and, um, you know, watching different, um, body movements and that sort of stuff just to see how you are working functionally uh, and making sure that that is all working properly and then depending on what I find giving you the exercises and and stretches and that sort of stuff to work on um, you know to fix those those imbalances basically Exploring Mind and Body with True Form's Drew Taddea would not be possible without the help from the following sponsors. AG Foods in Gidsbury, CLC Fitness Center, Health Street in the Cornerstone Shopping Center Olds, and Shoppers Drug Mart. Working together to help build a healthier tomorrow. For more information on True Form Life, Drew Taddea, or how to become a sponsor of Exploring Mind and Body, visit trueformlife.com. This segment brought to you by True Form Fitness for all your health and fitness needs. Personal training and group classes available locally. Visit trueformlife.com for details. So how does it look when someone comes in and, and they go through a proper assessment and you notice that there's some imbalances or there's some parts of their body that needs to be strengthened? Mm-hmm. How does that work when someone needs needs some help? They need some maintenance to balance themselves out? Well, depending on how how bad it is, I guess is the worst way way to put it. But, um, you know, if it's something that they can easily fix on their own, as far as, um, you know, me giving them the exercises in the home program, um, to, to work on it, then, uh, you know, I'll give them that if there's, um, more complex issues, um, you know, then I would, 
probably send them more so to, to somebody like yourself to get more intense training as far as um, working on large muscle groups and that sort of stuff. But if there's little, um, you know, muscle imbalances and that sort of stuff, just to get them working on, on what we call a home program. So I give them, uh, you know, however many stretches and strengthening exercises that they need, depending on what exactly is going on. Um, you know, write that all out, give them the pictures and that sort of stuff. And it's something that they do on their own. Uh, and then if needed, they can come back in for follow-ups depending on, you know, how bad they are and that sort of stuff. If they're, um, you know, pretty weak in some areas, then they may need progressions for that sort of stuff. Um, but it might be something where, you know, I just get them to follow up with, you know, a trainer or something, um, somebody like yourself that has been working with them already, or maybe not, um, you know, to work on some of those progressions outside of the clinic as well. So if you're giving someone a program, depending on how advanced their condition is, let's say, how often do they need to work on their at-home program? Or does it vary per individual? It, it probably varies per individual. Sometimes, um, you know, if they're, if they've actually got like a really weak, um, say a hip muscle or something like that, it might be something where they need to do it every day initially. Um, they're not usually lifting heavy weights or anything like that. So it's all uh, stuff that they can be done every day. It's not a, a really rigorous kind of exercise program or anything like that, that I usually give out. It's, it's usually small little, um, you know, stabilizing muscles and, and stuff like that. So uh, sometimes it's every day. Sometimes it could be three to four times a week, something like that. But usually it's all stuff that you can be doing on your own at home without really much equipment at all. You don't need, you know, a treadmill or, you know, lots of weights or anything like that. Usually I try and, and work towards stuff that they don't need that gym equipment for because um, not everybody has that at home or has the the membership at the gym or anything like that to be able to go and do that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, obviously if you have that membership, I'll try and kind of cater towards what you can be doing there instead as well and, and incorporating some of that stuff. But if you don't, then just working with what you have at your house and, and trying to, you know, to give you that, those tools that, you know, you're not trying to, you know, find the other stuff to work on and, and, you know, find the equipment and have to go out and buy all this equipment or a gym membership just to get it done. Yeah. I think it's important to like those customized programs make a big difference than mm -hmm. uh, just a regular cookie cutter that everyone gets the same thing. Um, yeah. So, uh, so do people do the, do they do it? Do they do the exercises? Um, <laughs> not all the time. I'm not going to say every patient is, is a hundred percent, but, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, if you're coming in for that sort of stuff, uh, then, and that's kind of what you're looking for, you're already geared towards doing it. Um, you know, my, my philosophy, I guess, is that, you know, I'm going to give you the tools to fix yourself rather than you having to come into the clinic, you know, three, four times a week just to fix you. Um, I would much rather see you doing your own exercises at home to fix yourself. And so if you're not doing that on your own at home, it's just going to take you that much longer to get better. So it's kind of leaving it up to the, the patient or the, the athlete or whoever it is that I'm treating to, to kind of fix themselves and I give them the tools to do it versus, you know, them having to come in all the time and get fixed by me. So if they're not doing it, then they're just not going to get better. So, you know, it's up to them and they can keep coming in to see me longer and that sort of stuff where they're not, you know, um, going to, going to get better quicker. So I had to ask because of course I give homework myself too. That doesn't always. Get yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to talk about national athletic therapy month. <laughs> you brought this up to me. I honestly have no idea what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for myself and for our listeners, can you tell us what that is? Basically June, um, right now is, is what we consider national athletic therapy month. And so, uh, our national association, the Canadian athletic therapist association, um, has, deemed June to be National Athletic Therapy Month. And it's just a way for us to promote the profession um, because we are such a small profession uh, nationwide that we're trying to get the knowledge to the general public out there and, and uh, you know, to, to educate the general public about what it is that we do and just help so that, uh, you know, we can help the population get better. And, and, you know, like our profession in Alberta alone, there's probably only, I think it's about 120 athletic therapists. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the majority of us, you know, aren't that well known as far as what our profession is and that sort of stuff. There's a lot of athletic therapists that work in, um, you know, 
sports teams and, and colleges and universities. So they're not accessible to, to the general population and general public. And so, you know, there's not a lot of clinical therapists that are, that are in the general public. So the more that we can get out there and, and educate people as to what our profession is and what we can do for people uh, is kind of what National Athletic Therapy Month is all about. So how are you guys raising awareness? You labeled it... Uh you, you use the title, and uh, you, and you wanted to. You picked this month, and so what are you guys doing? Like, how are how are you spreading the word, or how are people finding out about this stuff? Uh, there's lots of different uh, therapists are doing a lot of different things. Um, you know, there's there's some that will put ads out. Um, you know, in the local newspaper, just to, you know, kind of saying, hey, this is what we do and that sort of stuff or holding different events, um, going to different trade shows and and that sort of stuff. Um, because of our profession being um, the on field side of stuff, we do cover, you know, different events and that sort of stuff. And so having, uh, some of our therapists working at, um, say like the high school rugby championships and, and that sort of stuff, and just getting the word out there that this is what we do and this is who we are. Um, myself, um, you know, just putting the word out through social media and, and now with you here, uh, just getting the word out there. So there's there's various different ways that people across the country have been doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Uh, I was just wondering how I'm always interested in marketing and seeing what people are doing to get the word out there. But I think it's important to let people know that, that there are other options, especially in prevention for uh, for injuries and keeping your body at its optimal level. Um, so are you, you're taking new clients right now? Uh, yeah, I am for sure. I'm open Monday to Friday and uh, have times throughout the day, uh, even after kind of work time frames as well. So Okay, so you're right here, you're local in Olds and you take, I'm sure you take people from around Mountain View County. Yeah, anyone, uh, I've actually had patients drive as long as over an hour to get to see me here. So, oh. um, which is you know, a little bit of a pat on the back for me, I guess, makes me feel good that people are driving that far just to, to see me. But um, yeah, anybody that wants to come in um, can just give us a call at the clinic and, and book in and, or if you want to learn a little bit more and that sort of stuff, then So yeah. you have a website so people can yeah. look at? Yeah, uh, collegiatesportsmedicine.ca uh, and that, and then you can click on the olds part of that one as well, or you can click on the red year one and see what else they have as well. They've got a few more options at that clinic, but uh, athletic therapy wise, we're the same in both clinics. So. And then also you have social media that you. Yeah, work. I'm on Facebook and Twitter. So you can follow us there and find out if we've got different promotions going on and, and that sort of stuff. And can you uh, leave the phone number in case anyone wants to give you a call? Sure. 403-791-2766. Okay. All right. Thanks so much for joining us. Go and uh, visit Rebecca here in Olds. Um, in prevention and don't wait till don't wait till you have an injury and you need to have a take a step back from your athletic life um thanks so much for joining us and uh we'll look forward to working with you in the future thanks for having me exploring mind and body with true form life's drew tadian brought to you in part by curves complete the whole solution that makes burning fat as easy as one two three get exercise meal plan and coaching for 14.95 a week call curves and olds at 403-556-5992 to schedule a free no obligation appointment that's all we have for you this evening be sure to tune in next week for some more health and fitness tips as always i'm your host True Forms, Drew Tadia, fitness expert in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Forms, Drew Tadia, fitness expert. For more on True Forms, Drew Tadia, visit trueformlife.com. Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia would not be possible without the help of GDK Gravel and Sand. GDK Gravel and Sand, now offering all products in half and one yard bags. Give them a call today for more information. 1-877-335-2091.